Luke 17. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into the village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at the distance and called out loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Stop. Let me just give you an illustration, okay? Let's pretend this is the gate of the city. Most of the cities in Galilee would have walls around them in order to protect them, and they would have guards at them to not let people who wanted to do damage to the city. So what happens is this. If you had leprosy, you were kicked out of the city, so you would stand at the gate of the city begging people for money, alms. And what happens is Jesus is coming into the town and he's walking by these leopards who are not allowed in the city. If they're caught in the city, they will be killed. So now they're begging for alms. But isn't this incredible? Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Nowhere does it say they're crying out for healing. They're thinking, Lord, just have pity on us. We're leopards. Now, when he saw them, he said, go and show yourself to the priests. And they went, and they were cleansed. Listen to their faith. I mean, Jesus just says once, go to the... Now, if they go to the priest as leopards, and they are not healed, the priest can get the guards to come and get them, and they'll be in major trouble. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at the feet of Jesus and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except the foreigner, the Samaritan? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. So let, let, let's deal with this. I, I'm a little bit hurt inside, and partially it's me too. We as Canadian Christians, we don't show enough appreciation to God. I mean, yes, we show appreciation on, on Thanksgiving weekend, but I mean, we don't show enough appreciation to God. L let me take you through three W's that will help you show more appreciation to God. First one is worship. The first W, worship. Now, Romans chapter 12 says, present your body as a living sacrifice. That's how you start in showing appreciation to God, living sacrifice unto God. And then it tells you what it should be, holy. Only God can make you holy, but pleasing. You can do that to please God. And then it says, this is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when I am holy and pleasing, I am showing worship. Now, can I just share this with you? When you are pleasing unto God, okay, you are showing appreciation to God. When you start to do what God wants you to do, you are showing that you appreciate him, you are thankful for him, you're thankful for his word, you're thankful for what he wants you to do. Now, it might not be, I like what I have to do, but I still am thankful for it. And what happens is this, we worship God. We worship God. Some people think worship is just singing. That's absolute. That is just one form. When you do what God wants you to do. Illustration. Let me give you an illustration of this. And I'm not a very spiritual person, but I'll tell you how it goes. I'm in Walmart a few days ago. Lady is behind the glass. She's cashier. I'm going through Walmart. Nobody's behind me, which is very unusual. And all of a sudden, she, she takes my, uh, I do my uh, tap on the machine, and, and she gives me my, my stuff. And I just feel in my heart I should show appreciation to her. Not because I was preaching this, I just want to show. So I said to her, listen, thank you so much for what you're doing. You're a great cashier. I really appreciate you. And she looks at me. She said, excuse me, what did you say? And I thought because I have a mask on, she didn't hear me. So I said, thank you so much for what you're doing. I really appreciate you're doing a great job. You're a good cashier. And she looks at me, and she says these words. 
Those are the nicest words I've ever heard in a long time. Now, can I just share this with you? That blessed the heart of God. That was pleasing unto God to show appreciation to the cat. When was the last time you stopped and you thanked your postal worker, your mail person who comes and delivers mail? Thank you for walking through the stinking rain and snow to deliver my Amazon packages. I mean, you know what? When was the last time you thanked? I had this grumpy couple in my office. They had been married over 40 some years. And she looks at me, she says, he never shows appreciation to me. And I said, do you ever thank your wife? No, it's her job. And I looked at him, see, when guys talk that way, you know, if I wasn't a Christian, we'd be performing a funeral the next day. But the point is this, with Jesus in my heart, I have to hold back. So I look at him and I said, really? I said, so if that's her job, how much does she get paid? Well, she lives with me. I said, I know. You really should pay her for that. I said, because I can't figure anybody who wants to live with you. And he goes, well, what do you mean? I said, when are you going to show appreciation to her? See, here, here's the craziest thing. We've lost it. We've lost it. And, and one of the forms of worship is when you show appreciation. Let, let me take you to the second W. Are you ready? It takes work to show appreciation. Now, let me talk to you about the ten leopards. Are you ready? The other nine have been ostracized from their family and their friends since they've been leopards. Because they're outside the gate, it's not that they can go home at night. They can't go near their children. They can't go near their family. They can't go near their occupation. Nothing. They've been beggars because they are leopards. They're outside the gate, and these nine get healed. All of a sudden, it's like, hey, I can go kiss my wife. I can go hug my children. And somebody says to me, they could justify taking off instead of going Jesus first. No, the tenth one, it took work because he probably had family. He probably had friends. He probably could have justified himself just as the other nine. It takes work to show appreciation. Let, let me put it this way. The narrow path is the harder path. And you have a choice. The narrow path is put God first in appreciation. Put God first in appreciation. And somebody says to me, show me, you know, how to put God first. Well, here, here's the question I have for you, okay? Are you showing appreciation to God? When was the last time? You showed appreciation in God. When was the last time you, you did something for God that showed him you were thankful? You went beyond what God expects. You went beyond it. Let, let me take you to the third W. It's worship, work, and then the wonders. The Bible teaches me that when we show praise and thanksgiving unto God, the Holy Spirit is ushered in, okay? And the Holy Spirit comes in, and that's when miracles start to happen. I talked to you about Catherine Kuhlman before, healing ministry she has. Just study Catherine Kuhlman, incredible. She would never see the healings happen until people started to praise and worship and give God thanks. Thanksgiving was the foundation of her ministry in order that miracles, the wonders of God could happen. Jesus turns to him and says, your faith has healed you. I think one of the reasons I do not have as many miracles, although I have lots of miracles in my life, I know that God wants to give me more miracles than he's given me is probably because I don't stop and appreciate it and thank him the way I should. So somebody says to me, what's the application? Are you ready? I love this. Number one, here we go. Throw yourself at the feet of Jesus. Verse 15, one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice, and he threw himself at the feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Hey, when was the last time you did something extra to 
present your body as a living sacrifice to show appreciation. Let me give you an illustration of this. I'm asking you to try this sometime. When nobody's around, you don't tell anybody you're doing this. You get alone with God, and you get down on your knees if you physically can. And by yourself, you bow down before him physically, Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God. And you just start to thank him. You don't ask for anything. You don't pray for anything. All you do is thank him and love him and praise him. And you stay on your knees. And you don't, you don't talk quietly. Lord, I want to thank you. I want to praise you. I want to bow before you. I want to say I love you. Lord, I just love you. I praise you. I adore you. Lord, thank you. Lord, I'm not asking for anything. All I want to say is, I love you. I love you. See, here's the crazy thing. Throw yourself at the feet of Jesus. Throw yourself at the feet of Jesus. When was the last time you threw yourself at the feet of Jesus with your finances? Where, yes, you tithe 10% of your gross, you're doing what God wants, and yes, you give some money to me. But when was the last time you went into your finances and you literally gave God a financial gift for missions or, or for persecuted church or for something like this, like churches in Northern Ontario, we financially help and so forth, and you threw yourself at the feet of Jesus with your finance. Can I tell you, we have 36 volunteers today in the children's wing helping the children's ministry so we can social distance the kids. 36 volunteers. On a Thanksgiving weekend, they could be anywhere else, but they're here. Can I tell you, all 36 of them, by doing that ministry, are throwing themselves at the feet of Jesus. Some of us, we have this thing called the me gospel. Me, 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 me. Instead of him, 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 him. Number, number two is this, thank the Father. Thank the Father, thank the Son, thank the Holy Spirit. Thank the Father, thank the Son, thank the Holy Spirit. When was the last time you just took time to thank? Let, let me tell you a story. I'm teaching in Bible college. I was a professor for a few years in Bible college. I did not like that job at all. I love the students, but it just was hard to teach. The one, one of the teachers had a PhD, a doctorate, and everybody on staff listened to him. And this day he had the faculty in, and I was part of the faculty, so I had to show up. And he was with his doctorate waxing eloquent on how he only says grace once a year before a meal. And he was teaching us that once a year, instead of every meal thanking God for the food, once a year he has a long prayer before the meal thanking God for all the meals he's going to have all year. And he, with his doctorate, was standing there waxing eloquent, using big words, and letting on like he was know, knowing everything. I raised my hand. He said, yes, Billy. Well, uh, you only pray once a year, thank God for all the food you eat. Do you kiss your wife only once a year? I said, seriously, this once a year thing, like how far do you go with this? I said, I'll be truthful with you. I have a hard time eating without thanking God for the food. Every time. And maybe I understand once a year taking a real special prayer, but I'll be honest with you, every time, breakfast, lunch, supper, I thank God. Oh, by the way, I also kiss my wife more than once a year, more than once a day. And when I'm with her, more than once an hour. 
And I said, could we get this over with so I could go see my wife? The, 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 when was the last time? When was the last time you, in, you didn't come with an agenda to, you know, I need this or we need that or I just want to just thank you. When was the last time you just sat there and thought about what Jesus did on the cross for you and you just thanked him? It wasn't one of these quick thanks, thanks. Lord, this is amazing. When was the last time you thanked the Holy Spirit for being in you, not just beside you, but in you? Well, here, here's, here's the one, ready? Throw yourself at the feet, thank. And the third one is this, tell the miracle to others. See, the leopard, he comes back, and he doesn't say, oh, Jesus, could I talk to you privately? No, in front of everybody. He throws himself down, and he just starts to thank. Absolute, and he's a foreigner. Just absolutely goes absolutely spiritually nuts so everybody can know. See, one of the keys to telling the miracle to others is your testimony. Now, if somebody says to me, well, you don't know my family. Let, let me take you a little further, okay? One of the guys was telling me about his family. He has a large family, and at Thanksgiving, they get together. Now, I don't know if he's getting together this year, but every year they get together. His family, his family is made up of mostly non-believers, atheists, agnostics, and they don't want him to share Jesus at all. They forbid him preaching, giving a testimony, anything in the house when the families gather, everybody. If he says anything spiritual, they'll shut him down immediately. Are you ready? So he, every Thanksgiving, says, I preach at them, but it's less than five seconds. But he says they hear it. He says, I know the rules but I still preach at them every Thanksgiving. I said, so what do you do? He says, when the meal's going on, he says, I give this to them at the right time. See, timing is everything. He says, we're laughing, we're having a good time, and they're drinking their alcohol, and I'm drinking, I forget what he says, coffee or something like this, and he says, we're, la and he says, we're having the life of the time, and he says, all of a sudden, when there's a pause, I say to everybody, I want to just thank God for every one of you in my family. I love you so much. May God bless you. And then he says, I start eating. Did you hear this? He says, not once have they been upset with me. Matter of fact, you could tell their hearts were touched. See, it's not a question of give me 30 minutes so I can preach at you, give you my testimony. No. The fact is this. We are able to give the testimony, and this is what the leper does. He comes back and he shares his testimony with others. He doesn't say, Jesus, could I talk to you private? No. I'm going to let everybody know my testimony. This guy just healed me. Timing. The second one is truth. Jesus lives in me. I can't explain the whole thing. I just know he's in me. And the third one is make it tasty. I learned this a long time ago, that when you're giving your testimony, make it so the person will want to listen. Jesus says in John chapter 3 to Nicodemus, you've got to be born again. But he says to the lady in John chapter 4, you need living water. Why didn't he say born again lady it meant nothing to her? Why didn't he say living water in Nicodemus? It wouldn't mean anything. He made it so it was applicable to the person. All these people around Jesus knew this was the leper. He still had his leopard clothes on. But now he's healed. So, so let me take you a little further on this. 
It is time that we show God appreciation. But let me take you a little further, and, and I just want you to listen to me carefully. When was the last time you showed God appreciation by appreciating others? Do you know that I showed appreciation to God by thanking the lady at Walmart? But let me take you a little deeper. Are you ready? When was the last time you showed God appreciation by appreciating yourself? Because Jesus died for you, you must be something good. Father God calls you one of his child. You're in his family. You must be phenomenal. But for some of us, the hell has put in our heads that we are trash. And we are not. We are king of kings, kids. When was the last time you, you just appreciated yourself? And I know you're going to think I'm arrogant, and I'm not on this one at all. But the other day, I, I've lost some weight, and I need to lose a lot more, and I am after Thanksgiving is over. But I'm standing in front of the mirror the other day, and I'm by myself, and I look, and I see how much weight I've lost. And I said to myself, you're a beautiful hunk. <laughs> now, can I just share this with you? Yes, I saw the fat still on me, some of the fat, but a lot of fat has gone. The pants are smaller, but they need to still be smaller. But I'm tired of how hell has taken you and taken me, and we always have to pick on ourselves instead of rejoice at what God has helped you do. God has helped me lose weight. Now God needs to help me lose more weight. And what I say to you, and I say this in love, is this. When you appreciate yourself, you are appreciating God. Now, let me tell you the story. Oh, this is so cool. I want to thank you. I want to end the sermon thanking you for being such great people. Not only in sanctuary, but on live stream. Now, I want to set this up properly because we do have people from other churches watching us on live stream. Live stream people who go to Church on Queensway, we want you to tithe to Church on Queensway plus give missions offering, et cetera, et cetera. But if you go to another church, we want you to tithe to that church. Now, we don't mind your missions offering coming to us because as soon as we get your missions offering, we don't keep it at all. We give it away, and that's the truth. But now, let me tell you how much I appreciate you, how much heaven appreciates you. There's a church in a village in Ontario, and I will not mention the village. There's a pastor there, and he well, he hardly gets any money from the church. He works as a part-time person. And he works very hard going around and fixing stuff in houses and stuff like this in order to survive. Yet he still pastors this church. Now, when I say pastors this church, he must give this church at least 30 to 40 hours minimum a week. Plus, he works on the side to help support his family 30 or, he, I mean, he does at least 70 hours to 80 hours a week of work in order to survive. Now, pay attention. We hear through the rumor mill, he doesn't phone us, but through the rumor mill, that his church is the coldest church in North America in the wintertime. And the reason is the 20, 25 people that meet in the sanctuary, it's a little old building the windows are so bad that you can feel the wind coming, and they've caulked, they put plastic over it, they've done all this stuff, but the people are so cold, and the church only has electricity, uh, electric heaters. The people are so cold in the wintertime that people will not come to his church in the wintertime, or if you do come to his church in the wintertime, you have to wear coats. Even men wear hats during the service in the wintertime. It's so cold. That's pretty cold. So we, Church on the Queensway, we say to whoever's telling us, and the pastor's not telling us, but we hear through the grapevine 
that what he needs is new windows. So we went as a church because of you. Because you were giving your finances in appreciation and love to God, we took that money instead of keeping it. And one of the things we did was we went and bought the whole church new windows. Now, wait, you haven't heard the rest of the story. We also made a contract with the company who did the windows that they would have to put them in professionally. So they put them in. Well, this guy, he could not believe that a church in Toronto would give money to buy new windows for this church in a village in Ontario. And when I say village, it's not a town. It's smaller than a town. It's a village. And he was so thrilled about it, he invited the whole village. Well, it's COVID-19. The village has nothing else to do. He invited the whole village to come see the new windows. And they did. And when he came, he had a special guest speaker speak to them about Jesus being the window of your life that can take you into the blessings of God. And two people came to know Christ. And he sends me pictures of him standing like Vanna White in front of his windows. And all he said is, we cannot believe Church on the Queensway helped us. This winter, we're going to be warm. Do you know that when you financially gave, you were showing appreciation to God by us giving windows to that little church in a village shows appreciation God, but out of that, two people came to Christ. Can you imagine? People came to Christ because of windows. Isn't that amazing? Now, let me take you a little further. Let me tell you how much I appreciate you. And I've told you this for the last three weeks, but my heart's just incredibly blessed. Matter of fact, I'm going to cry. I, I cannot tell you the country. For those of you who haven't heard this story, just keep, you'll hear it. I can't tell you the country. I can't tell you the organization. I can't tell you anything like this. But we just finished help financially build an orphanage for 90 children in a persecuted country. And it's in a safe zone where these 90 kids are. Every kid in this orphanage in this building now, they have beds, they have washrooms, they have a classroom, they have a place to eat, they even have a playground in a fenced area. Nobody can kidnap these kids or come in. The fence is all around. There are guards there 24 hours a day to protect the kids. These 90 kids are sleeping, getting educated, all this stuff. Every kid in there, over 90 kids, there, well, there's 90 kids now, there's over 90 kids now. Every kid their parent has been executed for being a Christian. And they send us pictures, and we can't show these pictures to you, of the new building. None, no pictures of the kids, but the new building. And these kids are just cannot believe that they have a bed, a school, Mommy and Daddy have gone to be with Jesus. They got killed for the gospel. But look what God has given us. Do you know that when you financially gave that you were going to touch orphans overseas who've lost their mom and dad for the gospel of Christ? That's appreciation. You showed appreciation to God, and God took your appreciation and now is blessing children overseas. Can I tell you something? Listen to me. Listen to me. The path is narrow to do appreciation, and it's your choice. 
But when you show appreciation to God, not only to God, but to others and to yourself through the Holy Spirit, it will turn around and be blessing. It will be blessing. We've lost appreciation. We've lost appreciation. Yes, we're appreciating, but we could do so much more. Don't take each other for granted. Don't take God for granted. And don't take yourself for granted. The fact is this, you are a child of God. Walk as a child of God. Give as a child of God. And love being a child of God.